first of all apologies for coming coming in a little late um well i just finished one meeting and i'm rushing in for this one uh, thank you for waiting everyone uh, my name is dolan and um, well i look after student recruitment uh, in india in middle east and a bit of africa as well so my job is to interact with a lot of students and parents and academics uh, principals and and you know all those who are interested to know more about kings um, in case they are planning their higher studies uh, at kings college london so um, without further ado i will just start uh, with the presentation well the uh, the plan today is to really give you a very brief overview of what kings is uh, all about and um, giving you a sense of what it what uh, we offer and what are the entry requirements uh, in order to study at kings and a bit of what students can do beyond their classroom and also uh, some career opportunities all right so well uh, kings uh, very briefly is a pretty old institution uh, so we are uh, we are the fourth oldest institution in uh, england and uh, we were founded by the king of england uh, therefore we are called kings college london so not a very original name but yeah this is how it works in the uk uh, and we are a part of the russell group university if you are aware of what russell group is essentially uh, you know it's a group where uh, which is which gets a bit of funding from the government to work on various research projects and we are part of that uh, group because we are a research focused university and uh, we've produced a whole lot of you know uh, really uh, eminent people uh, through the years who have literally changed our lives uh, of course we've produced about uh, 14 nobel laureates but not everybody gets a nobel prize um, you know we have rosalind franklin who never won a nobel prize but she discovered the structure of the dna right and uh, and uh, if you've heard of maxwell uh, well maxwell's equations um, of electromagnetism well he drew the uh, his equations at kings uh, now without those equations we wouldn't have the internet uh, and also we have daniel who discovered the first constant current battery so no daniel no smartphones so uh, I, we can say that you know modern life wouldn't have probably happened without the contribution uh, of various uh, king stalwarts right um and well um, where rankings are concerned um, you know students all over the world are they follow rankings a lot but i would say that yeah just have a look at the rankings you know get a sense that it is a good university or not but don't be obsessed with it because there's so much more to a university than just rankings right so having said that we are a decent university with uh, we are a university with decent rankings uh, we are top 40 in the world uh, top 6 in the uk top 3 in london um and um, well uh, over the years what is important is that uh, you know the consistency is, is there right so for the last uh, well 200 years or you know or, or, or so we have maintained uh, a certain level so whatever we teach we teach it at the high, at a high level at an international level and the research that we produce is it, it has a tremendous impact on various aspects of the of world's issues and problems so that is important okay? um now over the years of course students the number of students have increased who uh, who come to study at kings they come from all over the world so currently we have about 34000 students about 18000 of them are international students now um this is important because you know a university needs to be international especially for an international student so if you are you're from turkey you're an international student uh you try to go to a university which it has a lot of international students and also students from different countries not just a few now this is important because uh when a university is international that means the the courses uh you know the support uh, the environment 
everything is kind of geared towards uh, the benefit of an international student, right? Uh, so you wouldn't want to be studying things which are just maybe uh, UK centric or Eurocentric. It should be, it should have a global flavor. So that is what we kind of, uh, you know, pride in uh, where our offerings are concerned, where our pastoral care is concerned, where our, you know, campus vibe is concerned. It is a very international uh, space. Um, and where students from Turkey is concerned, we have um, more than 300 students in the campuses. This is not too many and not too few. I think it's just about the right number so that you don't only mix with students from Turkey, uh, you make friends from all over the world. And that is why you're going to uh, uh, you know, a university in a different country so that you learn from uh, students, from your peers, from, you know, uh, from all, all parts of the globe. Um, so in a university, you not only learn from your academics, um, you also learn from your fellow students. So I think this, for some reason, uh, the presentation is not showing on, on Zoom. Um, so what should we do about it? Um, can we try to go ahead? Here, from here, yeah. should I go do a new share? No, no, like from here, we can choose the you know screen. I think this one, this one, you want this? I think so. Or this? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, can I get a thumbs up that it is now showing up on the screen? Yeah, it says okay. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it, it is showing up all. We okay. can continue. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so uh, like I was saying that, um, you know, you should be kind of interacting with students from all over the world and that's why you're going to a big university, an international university in a different country. Um, right, so uh, this is uh, where we are located. Uh, we are right in the heart of the city. So this is, this is central London. And if you see the red boxes, they are King's campuses, right? And we have some libraries as well. So uh, some of those are coming up in those red boxes. Um, now, if you um, if you see the purple boxes, they are institutions of importance within in, in central London. So you can get a sense that we are literally surrounded by everything that's important, everything that's uh, you know that London has to offer to the world, right? And uh, it's not just that, you know, uh, these institutions are close to us. We also have connections with them. So whatever you may be studying, whether it's, you know, arts and humanities or whether it's media, culture, film studies, uh, uh, we will have some, some connect with an important institution. Uh, to give you some examples, you know, let's say you want to uh, study finance. So we have a course called Finance Analytics. And HSBC kind of, um, you know, collaborated with us to design the course because, you know, they were looking for specialists within the finance analytics sector. Uh, and they felt that, you know, with, with our expertise and with their kind of inputs, uh, we, we can offer a wonderful course so that we can uh, skill the right kind of professionals for this particular domain. Similarly, you know, if you're interested in, let's say, English literature, uh, you know, we have the Shakespeare's Globe right next to our Waterloo campus. Uh, if, uh, you know, again, the courses are designed along with a Shakespeare's Globe. If you're interested in film studies, well, uh, we have the British Film Institute, which is again close to the Waterloo campus. So, you know, we have like special film screenings um, by the BFI and there are discussions and analysis on, on films and so on. Uh, so essentially the students benefit from all the connections that we have, right? And also I, I feel that you know, over the years, whatever I've seen, 
with Kings uh, over the nine years that I'm with Kings, I have seen that Kings goes a long way in making these connections happen. So I remember a few years ago, there was a British astronaut in space. Uh, so he was in the International Space Station and we connected the British astronaut with students in the classroom. So it was a once in a lifetime opportunity for the students to actually talk and ask questions uh, to the British astronaut. So, uh, you know, it's, it's so, so we do, we do kind of try to ensure that uh, the students benefit in various ways through the various connections that we uh, we have. Um, and what can I talk about? London. Well, London, as you all know, is one of the world capitals. Um, it is, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful city. Uh, but being in central London is even more uh, beneficial for the students because that is where all the action is. You know, that's that's the hub. And also London has been voted the uh, best student city for several years. So that means that it has all the resources which are, you know, for the benefit of the student. So there are academic resources. There are, you know, uh, uh, things that you can do for social life. Uh, there are career resources and it's all at your doorstep. So that's, that's really uh, useful because as a student, you're always short of time, you know? Uh, so it's, it really helps for an international student to be in the right location. So for an international student, I would say, it's, it's really important that you study in a good university, in an international university, which is well located. These two things are important because over the years, what I've seen is, of course, there are wonderful universities in you know, different parts of the country, but ultimately, you know, to, to have a, a comprehensive holistic kind of experience, where you are kind of benefiting uh, from the academic resources, from the career resources, uh, you have to be in the right place uh, where there is easy access for, you know, for any kind of resource that you need. You know, let's say you're looking for, a, you know, you have an assignment uh, where, you know, you, you are researching on a particular topic and that you're not finding in your uh, university libraries. Well, there's the British Library, uh, which is, you know, just very close by, you can drop into the British Library and kind of access uh, the resource that you want. And similarly, maybe you want to study law um, and you are, you know, you have some free time. Well, you can go to the uh, Royal Courts of Justice, which is a stone's throw away, and maybe attend some court hearings, you know, see how things are happening. So that, so this is possible only because everything is close by, right? Uh, because like I said, students are always short on time and also always mostly short on money. So you can't really travel, you know, far long distances uh, to access every kind of resource. And also, you know, the, you know London is, you know, uh, known for uh, so many career opportunities, including, let's say, you know, um, networking sessions. So networking is very important uh, to kind of, you know, look out for opportunities. So our careers will organize some networking sessions. However, the city will also have networking sessions. So you can avail of the, you know, the best of both worlds, a good university's resources, as well as the city's resources. So, um, so also one more thing that you may feel that, uh, I'll just go back to the slide once again, that the camp, we have five campuses, four hospitals, and of course, libraries and all that, you may feel that, you know, it's quite uh, spread spread out. But uh, if you, uh, in, in, if you're really there, you will see that number one and number two, which is considered to be one campus, the Strand Campus and the Bush House, they're actually opposite to each other. There's just opposite sides of the road. Uh, and from number one to number 10, if you see, it's just about 12 minute walk. Um, so it's a Strand campus, the Waterloo campus. It's about a 12 minute walk. And, um, you know, the rest of the campuses are mostly uh, hospitals and medical campuses. So if you are, um, you know, studying life sciences or uh, any biosciences, you will be on the south side of the river. OK. And if you're studying, let's say, uh, business or um, any engineering or computer science, you'll be on the north side of the river. 
right? Okay. So this is a closer view of our Strand campus. This is the law school. Uh, this is our biggest campus. Uh, there are there's the engineering department is also on uh, close to it. Social sciences and public policy is also taught here. Um, this is our business school, the Bush House. This used to be uh, the BBC's office. Uh, BBC has moved out and uh, we have moved in. Um, and uh, the foundation is also taught here. So those who are looking for foundation, um, it will be taught here. Um, and uh, some other courses from the informatics department also uh, are held here. Waterloo campus, uh, several faculties are here as well. Uh, the life sciences, social sciences, um, then some dental courses, uh, nursing and midwifery is also here. So this is our medical campus. Uh, we call it the guys campus, which has the, the guys hospital. Um, again, uh, all our life sciences courses. This is another hospital, St. Thomas's campus. And uh, if you remember Boris Johnson had COVID uh, during COVID times, well, he was here and uh, thankfully he was revived. Um, so uh, then we have the Denmark Hill campus, which is the psychology, psychiatry and neuroscience campus. This is a bit south of central London. It's about five miles south. Uh, this also is very close to the Maudsley Hospital of Mental Health. So anybody uh, looking to study psychology, psychiatry, neuroscience will have the added advantage of being closely connected with the Maudsley Hospital. And what I've noticed over the years again is that not only students from all over the world you know, uh, consider King's to be a, a good institution. It's also the academics who want to be part of King's because they want to access the good resor research resources that we have. Uh, so that helps in their research. And through the research, they, you know, the students benefit because the courses just become more and more enriched because of the good research that the academics do. And uh, if you, this is our library. This is the central hall of our library, our, one of our libraries. This is a big library called the Mon Library. And um, if you remember your uh, Harry Potter films, if you remember Dumbledore's uh, office, it's kind of uh, modeled on that. I don't know whether uh, you, uh, anybody sees Harry Potter films anymore, but uh, this, is, um, this is the trivia I can share. All right. so. The International Foundation Program uh, at King's, um, let's talk about that. That is that is something that, it, it is one of the biggest uh, foundation programs, possibly the biggest university run foundation uh, program that is there in the UK. Uh, and there are certain degrees that uh, we do not uh, recognize for direct entry into our undergrad program. So for, for those, they have to do the uh, one-year foundation. And if you're doing the Turkish diploma, then you will have to do the uh, one-year foundation at King's, right? And what, uh, what do we offer? There are uh, nine pathways that we offer. So, of course, grouped into business and economics, arts and humanities and STEM. So uh, let's say you are interested to study business management, a BSc in business management, okay? So you have to choose the business management and social science pathway. So you've got to be very sure what is the degree that you want to progress on to. So according to that, you will have to choose the pathway uh, at the foundation level. Okay, if there's any uh, maths oriented subject that you need, that you will be studying, for example, if you want to study economics and mathematics, sorry, economics and um, uh, management, or just a BSc economics, then you will have to choose the economics and mathematics pathway, okay? And uh, well, if you want to uh, study computer science, uh, you have to do the computer science and mathematics pathway, right? And any uh, law program that you need, uh, LLB program that you would like to study, you have to do the global politics and social science pathway. So when you are writing a personal statement, you will have to be very clear. You have to mention what is, what is the pathway that you want to progress on to? Because we need to be sure that you have chosen the right pathway. Okay. Uh, so now these are one-year programs. Uh, however, um, if your English is uh, slightly lower than what we asked for, 
then you have to do an additional five weeks um, English English program at the foundation level. So then uh, you have to start in August rather than September. So we give you an option of either you can do it online um, and then you can come join us uh, in uh, January. Um, so uh, there are four ways, uh, four kind of uh, options you have uh, where you, in terms of how you want to start your course at King's, right? Uh, and um, the good thing is that almost 90% plus, 91% plus students, they are successful in finishing the foundation and progressing on to uh, a course at King's at the undergraduate level, okay? Uh, yeah. Ask a question. Do you have a breakdown of that by one person per, per program? No, I don't have the breakdown, but I would say that those who are looking for medicine, uh, they may or may not progress onto medicine or dentistry because they are so, uh, because it also depends on their UCAT score. Mm. Okay. Uh, so the if the UCAT score is not high enough, if the interview doesn't go well, uh, then you know you can't progress onto uh, year one of medicine, even if you've done a foundation, mm. right? So uh, how about that, business administration or engineering? Yeah, I mean uh, they are mostly sorted. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not it's not a problem. Okay. Yeah. So pre-sessional English is uh, is something that we offer for those who are again missing their ILTS by a bit. Right? So if you miss your ILTS by 0.5 or maybe one, uh, one point, um, then we have certain, uh, you know, you, we have we offer pre-sessional English courses, which you can take up uh, before you start your degree program. We also offer uh, summer programs. So we offer summer programs at the uh, pre-university level, that means uh, those who are at least 16 years old, they can uh, do a summer school. This is These are one-week programs. Uh, I would say uh, uh, not even a week. It's five-day programs. Um, and three sessions are offered, uh, three back-to-back -back sessions offered in July. There are various subjects that you can choose. So you can choose one subject per session. So let's say you choose a law in uh, session one, maybe you're also interested in psychology, so you also choose psychology in session two. Yeah, so uh, it's up to you. You can you can choose more than one session if you wish, and of course there will be fees for every session, and um, and also um, yeah, if you are if you require accommodation, so that package is also there with us, right? Um, and at the university level, in case there are students who are already studying in a university, uh, then we have a two-week program for them, or I would say a 12-day program rather. Uh, so there are two sessions again in July. Uh, it's slightly longer than the pre-university one and uh, different subject areas again you can choose. Um, there's, well, lots of uh, business programs, there's marketing. Um, there are also interesting programs like Sec Secrets and Spies, or maybe the London Cityscape and London Life. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, now the summer school is really popular at Kings uh, because you know it gives a good taster of what it is to study in a big university like Kings, what it is to be taught by uh, Kings academics, uh, what it is to you know interact with students from all over the world. Uh, what it is to live in London for a short while. So, so it gives you it, it gives you that opportunity to make an informed decision about you know what you want to study, um, where you want to study, uh, you know whether you like studying at King's, whether you like living in London, uh, whether you love it or not really so much. So it kind of gives you uh, that opportunity to uh, make a decision for yourself, and also um, you know. Uh, what I've what I've seen over the years is that um, this also kind of helps the students to make a better application uh, uh, at their at the higher level. You know, if they want to apply for a higher degree, uh, maybe at foundation or at uh, undergrad level or even at postgrad level, it helps them because they are already you know in the system. 
they are a king student for some time. So they see the university from inside. They kind of interact with the academics. So their um, awareness, their exposure is there. So, uh, so that gives you content uh, for your personal statement. And uh, maybe it will set you apart. Uh, you never know. It all depends, of course, on how you convey it through your essay. So undergraduate, we offer a whole uh, range of courses at the undergrad level, um, lots of STEM courses, health courses, politics, social sciences, uh, business management, and so on. And um, well, most of the courses are three years uh, and quite a few four-year options are there because as soon as a course also offers you, let's say um, a, a year abroad, a study abroad year or an industry year, or uh, let's say a, a a, re a research year, so what we call them, we call them as M size or M eng. So then, whenever they these elements are there, uh, it becomes a four year program. Okay, I'm not sure if there are too many uh, takers for undergraduate for this session. So if there are more questions, I can take it later. Otherwise, I'm just moving on. Uh, postgraduate, uh, postgraduate again. Of course, uh, we have nine faculties. Uh, lots of interest for computer science, data data science, AI, cybersecurity, lots of health courses. Just to give you an inkling, you know, we have like 50, almost 50 courses in politics and social sciences. So there's lots to choose from. And my, my advice would be whether you're studying uh, undergrad or postgrad, look at all the different courses that are there, which are in the same faculty. Uh, you know, you may feel that, let's say you're thinking about international relations and because you're, you know, you, you are familiar with the term international relations, uh, you are just looking at the international relations course. However, like I mentioned, there are, there will be about 40 more uh, courses, which will have that, you know, which will be in that domain, right? So, uh, you should definitely give yourself some time to go through the modules of the different courses that we offer within a particular subject area. And then you make an informed choice as to which one you want to study, yeah? So just to give you a sense of the uh, competition, we get a lot of applications uh, for both UG and PG courses, um, plus of course foundation as well. Uh, but, but the interesting bit is, or the tricky bit is, I would say, that 50% of the, you know, uh, uh, 135,000 plus applications that we get are just for a few courses, right? So that means that these are the popular courses, right? So when so many applications come in for just a few courses, it just, you know, just becomes competitive for you. So uh, you got to put in your best application forward, right? Uh, so you can see that the top five courses would be your uh, business school courses, uh, social sciences, psychology, IR, uh, computer science, uh, and so on. So uh, you, you got to be putting in a serious application for any of these courses for sure. So what are we looking for uh, from the from an applicant? Essentially. Uh, we want to see your the actual or the predicted grades. If you don't have your actual grades and predicted grades are fine. Uh, we do mention our entry requirements, but please note that these are our minimum entry requirements. So we would definitely expect you to meet it and ideally exceed it, right? So um, just uh, if you if you don't meet our entry requirements, then um, I would uh, I would advise you not to you know put in. Uh, your effort to apply because uh, it's not going to be successful, unfortunately. So you must meet our entry requirements and um, definitely uh, exceed it as well. So uh, we are looking at a proven academic record. So we will look into your you know, transcripts and see what you have scored in which subjects um, and try to get a sense of your, uh, you know, your academic uh, skills and background and record and so on. We will also look into the reference. And of course, the, everybody's reference is pretty strong, but we, we are looking for certain endorsement of certain skills, right? So uh, let's say, you know, you're applying again for um, an IR course, international relations, but 
Uh, do you have the communication skills? Is there an endorsement from uh, the from the referee? Have you won an MUN maybe, or you're the best speaker in the MUN? And or, or do you have critical analysis skills? You know, do you are you a critical thinker? Do you assess things? You know, go, do you go deep into it? Do you kind of critically analyze it? So uh, if the referee kind of mentions those things, then that's an endorsement of your skills. Yeah. So we do look at the personal statement uh, very keenly. Uh, we want to understand why you're interested in it and so on. So I, I have a slide on that. I'll just talk about it in a bit. Um, of course, if there are any aptitude tests, essentially law and medicine requires aptitude tests. Some uh, uh, postgraduate courses require interviews, especially international management. Um, so we will look into that. If there's, uh, if if we ask for a writing sample for certain postgraduate courses like English, like media and culture and so on, then you'll have to. I write that and we will um it will be very very key for your uh for the success of your application okay this is uh for the foundation entry requirements um depending on what you're studying um there will be certain requirements obviously uh now for a levels ib students business management uh, law, medicine, you cannot apply. You cannot apply uh, for foundation, all right? However, if you are uh, doing the other degrees like the IBCP or the IB Cert, um, the American Diploma or the Turkish Diploma, then you can, uh, you have to apply through the foundation route, all right? So uh, you can see that the foundation, for some reason, we don't ask for for a very high GPA. It's about 70% in your final year, overall average. And if you're doing any maths-based course like computer science and mathematics or engineering and mathematics, we just also ask for 70% in maths in the final year. Now, because our requirement is, you can see it's not, not, that, not that prohibitive, uh, loads of applications come in, yeah? So again, your personal statement will be a uh, will be a key factor in uh, your success, right? All right, so um, for the foundation students, for those who are doing the Turkish diploma, the English language test is compulsory. And the test that we ask for is the UKVI ILTS. Now, there, are, there are two types of ILTS, okay? Don't don't just give the regular academic ILTS, you have to give the UKVI academic ILTS. And that is mandatory. If you are, uh, if you need a visa, then this is mandatory, all right? Now, you, if you, if you get six overall with no score below 5.5, then you can start in September. But if you have 5.5 um, with no score less than five, then you have to start in August, yeah? You have to do the extended foundation, all right? Yes. Now, extended foundation. Now, the PTE uh, academic uh, UKVI is also acceptable. So in case you are planning to give that, you can, uh, it's fine, we will accept it, all right? So these are the only two tests uh, in English for the foundation students that is, uh, that is acceptable. Not both, right? Either or. Either or, yes, exactly. Not both, please. <laughs> okay. Um, for uh, the undergrad uh, students uh, where IV or A-levels is concerned, uh, now IV we are asking mostly for 35 out of 45 for almost all our courses. And um, we are focused on the higher levels, right? So you can see uh, for computer science, we're asking for 776 in the higher levels. Uh, and uh, let's say for um, film studies, we're asking for 665. So it will vary from course to course, mm -hmm. right? So uh, use, most of our courses, we ask for 766 in the higher levels. So we are focused only on the higher levels. We really uh, don't mind what you have in your, it says as long as it is 35 out of 45 and the, the right scores in the HNs. Sure, go ahead. AP? Yeah, I'll come to the APs later. Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, so there will be subject requirements as well. So uh, let's say for computer science, accounting and finance, economics, etc., we'll ask for maths. Now maths, we will require uh, a six in HL, or if you're doing the A levels and it's um, it's A, yeah. Now there are two kinds of maths in uh, for IB, the AA and AI, right? Now, if you're doing any engineering subject, then it has to be an AA. So six HL AA maths, yeah? If you're doing any engineering, electronic engineering, biomedical engineering, or physics, right? So uh, similarly for medicine, we will ask for biology and chemistry, yeah? Uh, and also for um, uh, neuroscience, we will ask for biology and chemistry, okay? All right. Sorry, you, did you want to take a picture? Okay. All right. Now the, so APs, we also, uh, you know, accept some US qualifications or, you know, but we, we take it as a combination. So either you have five APs, all right, or you have an AP or an ACT combination. Now SATR is actually, uh, not offered by most of the you know, uh, schools anymore. So I would say that uh, let's stick to the APs, just the APs or APs plus and ACT. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's say for computer science, uh, you know, you're doing five APs. That's great. But we need all five, all fives for the five APs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you are uh, doing, if you if you want to study, let's say business management, so we will need um, again for five APs, we will need four fives uh, and one four. Yeah. So depending again on the subject, um, yeah, depending on the subject, uh, the APs uh, will be kind of uh, will vary, and also uh, ACT. Well, if you're doing three APs, then you have to do the ACT. So let's say it could be uh, three fives, three APs, and 30 ACT or a 29 ACT. Yeah. So it'll it'll depend on uh, what course you're applying for. Okay. I just want to ACT as an R. Is there any M? No. Only R? Only R. Oh. And if you just do the ACT, we will not accept that. Yeah. Uh, uh, the time to get the foundation of the AP scores. Is that okay? You don't have to do foundation if you are doing APs. If you're doing five APs or a combination of three APs and the ACT, then you are eligible for direct entry. Not foundation? No. Foundation is... And what if it's like not uh, required, like lower than the required? Uh... If you don't have the right amount of APs and, and you're doing the Turkish diploma, then you have to do the foundation. So you should have to the foundation. So essentially, you, if, you do, if you want to avoid the foundation year, then you have to do five APs or three APs and the ACT with the correct scores. But if you want to avoid the foundation, she doesn't want I want to get the then you don't need the APs at all. But it can add to your profile if you want. Yeah. Now, this is the English language requirement for undergraduate students um, and, um, and also postgraduate, I would say. So, uh, for quite a few of our courses, we ask for an ILTS of seven overall. 6.5 in each. So let's say any management program, uh, any, uh, you know, uh, international relations program. So it will be seven overall, 6.5 in each. Yeah. So this is for direct entry and also for postgraduate students as well. It's, it's, it's kind of valid for both. Um, and uh, we also accept uh, TOEFL, we accept the Pearson test. Um, yeah. And if you're at the, if you're doing the IB, and if you have a high level four or standard level five, it's fine. We, you will not need um, a further English test. But it is mandatory. The The thing is that the English language test, if we are, uh, I mean, it won't be waived. Uh, either you have the ILTS or the TOEFL or, you know, one of the ones that we accept. Okay. 
post uh, post graduate. Uh, so post graduate. Um, so can do we have any post graduate students uh, in in the online who are joining in online? In the chat, you mean, though, right? In this session, do we have any post graduate students? Uh, evet. I mean. Evet, okay. Okay, Great. All right. Uh, so uh, for postgraduate students, we are again focusing um, on the degree scores. So you must do well in your degree, right? Uh, in your university, GPA is very important uh, because there are no there are no entrance tests or you know any common tests that you need to give. So we are looking for three point two five out of um, four. Uh, in courses like law, international relations, uh, any any management program, any computer science program, uh, cultural creative industries, and so on. And the other set, uh, we would ask for three out of four GPA. Uh, you can see some of the examples are there, some of the psychology courses, uh, engineering with management, etc. And very few require uh, less than three, yeah, which is usually... Um, I mean, you know, not too many students uh, apply from Turkey for these courses. All right, so uh, I think I'll just quickly talk about the personal statement a bit. So a at the undergrad, undergrad level, when you're applying directly through UCAS, you have five choices, right? Uh, but you write only one personal statement. And at the postgrad level, uh, you may be applying to different universities, but uh, the personal statement that you will write for Kings you please must focus it to Kings. Don't write one personal statement and send it to all the universities. It will not work for Kings because we are looking for specific information in relation to the specific course that you're applying to from you, right? So therefore, um, it cannot be a generic kind of a personal statement, which you can uh, use for any university. Right, so personal statement, what are we looking at? Um, again, this is this is kind of a general information for all levels, okay? So we are look, trying to understand your academic interests. So what is it that is motivating you uh, to study at uh, King's for this with this particular subject, right? So the focus is more on the course subject area, um, uh, and we want to understand, you know, your reasons for wanting to study it. And those who are uh, at uh, those who are going to be going for foundation, uh, like I mentioned, I think earlier that what you want to study at the undergrad level, you must mention that in your personal statement because we have to understand that you are applying for the right uh, pathway, right? So, so you're already quite focused on what you want to study at the undergrad level, and you are just uh, talking about your interest for that particular subject area through the pathway. Uh, we want to understand your engagement with the subject. So we look we look for students who are genuinely interested, genuinely passionate about the subject area, right? That means, you know, you are studying the subject not only in school, not only in your curriculum, but also maybe you are following it outside your curriculum, right? So maybe you read, you write, maybe you listen to lectures, maybe you are doing your own research. Uh, so anything that is, um, you know, that you that is interesting to you, that you find valuable, uh, that gives you additional perspectives, uh, additional insights, gives you some skills, um, you know, related to the subject area, right? So you know, I mean. Uh, uh, some students read a lot, right? So, you know, they can talk about their engagement uh, with the subject through their readings, maybe, right? Some students, uh, you know, they have started their own business. Yeah, they are, you know, maybe through that process uh, of setting up a business, um, you know, they have engaged with the subject, right? So everybody's journey is different, right? Uh, and some students do uh, maybe an internship, now, uh, students, you know, they tend to go for internships which are famous, you know, of big companies. Uh, but that, but the names will not matter to us. 
you got to do something where you have learned something uh, which is valuable. Uh, so you got sometimes, you know, when you work in a smaller or you do an internship in a smaller organization, you actually get to learn more. Yeah. So you got to be a bit wise, a bit intelligent as to which um, activity or engagement is, uh, you know, giving you these uh, insights, giving you uh, exposure, uh, you know, or, or setting you thinking or motivating you towards wanting to study this subject. So um, we also want to understand your suitability, your aptitude. Yeah. So, you know, whether you have uh, a scientific bent of mind or, you know, you have, you're good with numbers, um, uh, you know, uh, what are your key skills and competencies, right? So uh, if you can bring out through the essay your key skills and competencies, uh, that would be good. Uh, where extracurricular activity is concerned, and of course, you know, um, the most of the essay is really focused towards your academic interest. However, if you're only studying and not playing at all, uh, then that's also... Uh, not not great, I would say, because when you play, when you're involved in sports or music or anything, any other activity, really, it shows that you are organized, right? You are disciplined, you know, you have time management skills because you are studying at a particular level, you are also engaged in other activities. So it just uh, shows that you are, you have the kind of right preparation to study at the, at the university level, because at the university, you will not be expected only to study. There will be a lot of study, but you will be expected to do to be engaged in various kinds of activities that are there in the campus, right? And also, uh, if you, and this is the last point is really more for postgraduate students. Uh, if you are aware of what is it that you want to do in the future in terms of your career, uh, and how this course will help you achieve that, uh, that would be a good, uh, good, uh, that would be good to know for us. Because, you know, it's, it's, we are offering you a, a course. So essentially, it should be a, a good marriage between, you know, uh, you and the university, right? So, you know, we are good for you, and you are good for us. So, mm -hmm. so think about it like that. So, uh, you shouldn't be studying a subject that is actually not suitable to you. So maybe going through the modules, uh, you have figured out that, yes, I want to, let's say, work in the consultancy sector, and this particular course is going to, uh, you know, give me certain skills, which will enable me to work in that sector. So, um, it, so this is something that uh, you kind of can think of. All right, so I'll move on. So I'm just moving on from this because it's a lot of details which we can discuss later. PhD application process. I do have a friend here who wants to apply for a PhD. Um, so essentially there is this, you can just take a photograph of this, um, this slide. So there is, a, there is a link here, KCL Pure kcl.ac.uk so that will have the list of uh, all the research that is going on and the corresponding academics yeah so you can see what which supervisor is into what right if there is anything at all that is matching with your area of interest and if there is then you have to contact that particular supervisor uh, with an overview of your research proposal not a huge humongous mail a short, concise mail uh, I, I, I, I, along with your relevant experience or whatever you want to share. And you must send your email only to one supervisor at a time. If that supervisor says no, then you send it to someone else because what students do is they bombard it to every, every academic in the faculty and uh, the faculty's talk and they, they straight away, they um, don't prefer that, yeah? Uh, the more. Sure. Okay, and uh, the, so the applications for PhD is open throughout the year. So there are four entry points. So in case you, because it takes time, you know, you will write to a supervisor, they will 
take time. They will get back after months. So you've missed one entry point, but you can always, uh, you know, aim for the next entry point. Okay. And you, uh, I mean, students, of course, they ask about funding. Most of the funding is available only for home students, but you can ask the supervisor or the academic whether they have access to any specific funding for international students. So I was, uh, let's uh, go back to what you can do, um, you know, outside your classroom. So um, th there's loads of activities. I was saying that, you know, you're not just going to be studying, you will be engaged in a range of activities, right? So, uh, so if you're looking for law, then you can work under uh, lawyers from PwC or Duncan Lewis solicitors. Uh, you can, you know, be take part in international mooting competitions. If you are uh, interested in uh, business studies, then you can do consultancy uh, for the SME sector, the small and medium enterprise sector. So our students did so well. Uh, with their, you know, reports that they made uh, working with the SME sector as consultants, uh, that it got published in the newspapers. So uh, it's a, this is serious kind of uh, valuable work that you can, you know, you can do um, and you can learn from it. You can add it in your CV. It kind of adds on to your profile. It helps you with your, not only with your academic learning, but also uh, for your careers beyond your degree, right? And if you're interested in, let's say, psychology, so we have a lot of psychology placements because we have so many connects with different hospitals, clinics, 60% uh, of what we do is in the health sector, right? So uh, we have a, a you know, you, you, we, we kind of place our students, uh, which is a part, which is a part of their course. They spend some time in, in clinics or hospitals. Uh, we have a lot of uh, student societies, um, so, these societies are run by students, obviously. Uh, and um, but, but to give you an example, I can talk about, um, you know, uh, what can I talk about? Okay, so let me uh, give the example of Hot Chocolate Society. So mm -hmm. Hot Chocolate Society is, uh, well, they call themselves Hot Choc Sock. Now, what do they do? They make a lot of hot chocolate. So we used to wonder, you know, what do they do with the hot chocolate? I mean, how much of hot chocolate can you have you know, in every meeting? So, well, they do make a lot of hot chocolate and then they distribute it to the London's, you know, local homeless, uh, homeless people. And they also give them um, first aid kits, you know, and they interact with them. So it's, it's a wonderful kind of um, engagement that they do. They are kind of, you know, helping the underprivileged, they are, uh, you know, uh, into, uh, trying to understand their point of view. Uh, so it's a good communication. It's a good understanding of the societal problems, et cetera, et cetera. So this is important because, you know, what I've noticed over the years that uh, the employers in the UK and in Europe and elsewhere now, if, mostly they are uh, engaged with a particular cause. So whether it's sustainability or with climate change or gender issues or equality, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so everyone is uh, associated or attached with a cause. And when they are interviewing students, uh, if the student, if the, if the applicant is also kind of, um, uh, you know, deeply engaged or involved in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a good cause, then it just, um, you know, makes it that much better. So, um, so you can think about, you know, uh, uh, societies and how best to, but there are fun societies. You can, you can join a society just for fun. You can learn dancing or the, you can play the ukulele because you like it. I mean, it's up to you how you want to spend your time uh, at the university. There are loads of options. It's up to you to make best use of the various, um, you know, uh, options and offerings that, of the university. So if you're interested in sports, well, we have 70 sports clubs. Um, and um, if you're really good, then you get to uh, represent the university. So, uh, you know, there's the British University Sports Network uh, that, that that they play, the universities play against each other. Uh, and we've produced um, Olympic, Olympic champions as well. So uh, we use the sports facilities of the city uh, which is obviously of a good level. Um, so if you're a serious sports person, then uh, you, you can utilize them as well. 
residences. So there are um, about 13 residences that we that we manage. Um, and um, if you apply by the deadline, then uh, you are guaranteed uh, accommodation, uh, but, but you must apply by the deadline. Uh, now, most of the accommodation, actually all the accommodation that we offer, they are, uh, you don't have to share the room. So it's en suite. That means uh, you have a you have an attached bath. Uh, however, the kitchen and the, the kitchen is shared. Uh, so, and you have to cook your own food. So they're all self-catered. So one big advice from, from, uh, from me is that you must learn how to cook before you go to university. Uh, because if you know how to cook, you'll eat your own food. Uh, your stomach will be happy and uh, your mind will be happy too. And parents will be relieved. So, um, however, if you don't want to cook, um, we, there's also the intercollegiate halls of residences, uh, which is intercollegiate means that it is shared by uh, students from other universities as well. So you'll be staying with, uh, let's say, UCL students or LSE students or Imperial students. Um, and, and, and there's uh, food available uh, over there. And, it's, and there aren't too many because there are, you know, obviously there's a limitation. So, uh, and where our residences are concerned, they're all King's students. Okay. Okay, uh, just a little bit about careers. Uh, so career services, um, so we have three career services. So one for the whole university, one just for business, and one just for law. Um, so careers and employability services, what they do, they essentially do two kinds of things. One is they prepare you for jobs, uh, and one is that they organize a whole lot of events. So they'll organize about a thousand events in the year almost. So um, they'll, you know, they'll try to understand, you know, uh, they'll try to make you suitable to apply for jobs uh, because it's a different, if you're looking for jobs, then uh, you have to understand what the system is, right? You have mm -hmm. to understand how best to apply uh, for the various jobs that are on offer because a CV in Turkey may be different from a CV in the UK, right? So what goes into that CV? How precise you have to be? How detailed you have to be? So you you got to understand those uh, nuances uh, and how to give an interview. How what sort of communication skill that you know you should you should have to be successful in an interview, right? Um, so the so we so the careers also organizes uh, a lot of events. They'll call in the employers uh, right through the year. So, you know, all the big, big, you know, your Facebooks and Googles and uh, all these, uh, all these people will come in for various events. So it could be a career fair, it could be a, a talk, it could be a panel, it could be a workshop, it could be a networking event. So, so all kinds of events. I think you, you don't, you don't have to be taking part in everything, but you're going to be alert as to what's happening and which ones you should participate in, which one you feel will benefit you, but you must attend a few if you are looking for career information or you're trying to kind of uh, build your network, right? And we also have the King's Entrepreneurship Institute. If you if you are, if you have a, an idea or you, you have an entrepreneurial kind of mindset, uh, then we will uh, guide you, we will back you, we will kind of, uh, you know, help you set up your uh, startup. Um, so, what we have seen is that because of various uh, support that we provide, uh, we are, uh, you know, well liked by the by the employers. Um, and this is this this list of uh, uh, the companies is really mainly uh, finance uh, focused. Uh, however, I mean, for some reason, it's it's just finance companies there, but. It's, it's really a wide range of companies or organizations or institutions that you can be engaged in. Um, and um, the good thing is that uh, our students tend to get the second highest salaries in the UK, which is exciting. So uh, in case you're planning to work, then uh, I'm sure you'll find something uh, suitable. The fees and funding, well, um, the tuition fees range uh, from 
let's say 24,000 plus. And the upper end is the medicine dentistry fees. Uh, so the foundation fees would be about 24,800 for this year. Uh, some of the fees for some courses for let's say law management would be about 30,000 uh, pounds. Some uh, engineering courses, uh, computer science courses can be a little higher, okay? Uh, Postgraduate finance fees are al almost 40,000 pounds. So it depends on what you want to study, the fee will vary. The living expenses will be about 16, 17, 18,000 pounds uh, a year. So depending on your rent, because that is the major expense, uh, so your rent will take a, a, a big big amount of your expenses for living expenses. Rest would be your food, your travel, etc. Whatever and you need. Forty thousand is per per semester or per year tuition. For, for, for, per year. Per year. Yeah, yeah, per year. Sorry, I should have mentioned that there. It's per year. Um, and um, scholarships are not too many. It's a few scholarships that we offer, um, and Sorry, it, uh, so for the foundation, we're offering about 10 scholarships, 4,000 uh, pounds each, and 2,000 pounds will be giving, will, we will be giving during our foundation, and 2,000 pounds when you progress to your degree. Okay. Undergraduate, very few scholarships are given for only one or two courses. Um, Postgraduate, we are offering scholarships in management courses and uh, global health and social justice. Yeah. If there are any scholarships that your government offers here or in any scholarship funding body offers in Turkey, then please do uh, search, uh, search it out because you never know, you know, sometimes you know, there are scholarship bodies uh, offering some, some, some sort of funding for overseas studies. Yeah, in terms of the policy for the health, for the uh, field or our argument made it on the line of action. Şöyle söyleyeyim, İngiltere hükümeti de zaten öğrenci vizesinde yaptığı zorunlu bir vize var. Onu biliyor zaten. Ee, sigorta var. Sigorta var, diş ve göz ağrıcı her şeyi kapsıyor o sağlık sigortası. Evet. Ve zorunlu yani vizeye başvuruyor. Ama Amerika'da ki değil yani. Yok, hayır. Hayır, hayır. hayır. üniversitede Amerika'da karşılar da. We have a question uh, being answered yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, Don, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, um, may I ask a question? Uh, yes. Just a second. Yeah, just, go ahead. Just in a second. Okay. Uh, we also have like a quest, couple of questions in the chat. So uh, first of all, uh, what are the requirements for, for transferring from the foundation school to the undergraduate LLB programs? So uh, that's all for yeah, it's usually it's usually an A that is required, uh, mm -hmm. and the LNAT score. The LNAT score needs to be high. So you, those who are applying for law, uh, LLB, and they have to do the foundation, uh, you have to write the LLB by thirty uh, first of December, and uh, because you will be spending some time at King's before that to the foundation, so there will be some sessions to kind of guide you on the LNAT process, right? To kind of skill you up for LNAT. But you must you must do well in LNAT. Um, it's an aptitude test. It's a bit tricky. You can't really prepare too much. Uh, you know, you uh, will, they will check whether you have skills in deductive logic or inductive logic, or you know, if you can make a balanced argument, things like that, right? So you've got to uh, practice a bit and write the LNAT and, and, and that, that's it. I mean, um, if the LNAT doesn't go well, then you may not be able to progress. Thank you so much. Um, what are, sorry. Do you have a breakdown of number of students who have applied for a particular course and admissions percentages? Okay, uh, uh, Kana, you'll have to repeat that question. But sure. before, just one more point I wanted to make was that in case, uh, you know, you are not successful in progressing on to the King's undergraduate program from a foundation, uh, please note that almost all the universities accept our foundation. So we are one of the uh, well-known, uh, you know, big foundation providers 
which is provided by the university. It is not provided through a private entity. It is the university's offering, right? So it is a well-regarded um, foundation course, which is accepted by uh, almost any other university, all right? Yes, Khan, you were, uh, if you can just uh, repeat your question. Do you have a breakdown of number of students who have applied for a particular course and admission percentages? Who have applied for a particular course and? Uh, admission percentages who have been admitted. Oh, okay. So the the success the success rate is about I would say uh, fifteen to twenty five percent. So some courses I'm not talking about foundation. I'm talking about undergrad, postgrad. Uh, foundation is ninety one percent success rate, but for undergrad, postgrad, uh, it, it can vary from eighteen to twenty five percent depending on the course. Some, it, it, it, it, uh, let's say a computer science course will have an 18% um, you know, success rate, but uh, let's say uh, a psychology course maybe will have a 25%-ish success rate. So th these are, I mean, these vary a bit from, from year to year. Um, it's not a, you know, an absolute strict number, uh, strict data, but yeah, it, it, it can vary a bit from year to year. At the basis and so on, all of this. The shake right there. Um, madam, I want to ask you, so I'm a current offer holder at King's, and as you've elaborated, there aren't much scholarships, but what are the opportunities available right now? What could I apply for? Because fees are a really big limiting factor for me currently. Um, Arda, right? Yes. You, if you don't mind, can you repeat the question, please? So I'm a current offer holder, and as you've elaborated, there aren't many scholarships. But for me, fees are a big limiting factor. What are the ones that I could apply for? For example, my IB grade is most likely going to be around the ballpark of 45. Is there a scholarship granted for no, academics or whatever it may be? Which course are you, uh, have you got an offer for? General engineering. Uh, really sorry, but unfortunately, we don't have any scholarship for <laughs> for your course. In fact, we mm -hmm. we have it only for geography, you know, and it's uh, it, it's it's sad. But um, uh, we see the thing is that you know, um, I mean, if, if I if I want to justify it from one perspective, um, so if you're looking at you know, the good Ivy League institutions in, in, in the US. So you will see, and, and King's is kind of more or less at par with that, right? So if you see their fees, they are much higher than King's fees. Um, so, and even if they uh, offer a small scholarship, it, it's still, it'll still be much, much higher than a King's fees. So from that perspective, um, you know, the fees are fees are actually not that high <laughs> given the level of the university. So unfortunately, um, Kings doesn't offer any further scholarships. In case you can find out anything that your government offers or your country offers, any institution, um, I will have to kind of uh, advise you like that. Yeah, unfortunately. I see. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Talun, again for the presentation. Uh, I think we are done for today. Uh, so thank you, thank you again for joining us. Herkese katıldığı için çok teşekkürler. Bir sonraki etkinliğimizde görüşmek üzere. Kendinize iyi bakın. Thank you so much, Talun.